most of you aren't subscribed. Make sure to conquer the subscribe button, as it helps out the channel. Without further ado, with each cast of the uncursed spell, Ark is sad to see that his human arm simply reverts back to its skeleton form every time. This confirms to Ark that he is indeed cursed, but by a powerful one. As Arian and Ark leave their village, searching for other captured elves, they stop at a bar, where Ark reveals his fear of bugs, but Arian says that bugs here taste amazing when fried. Asking about their mission, Arian reveals that she knows of bandits moving around a nearby forest, therefore they can cut them off, if they cut through the forest. Overhearing their conversation, a lady warns the two to be careful, having heard rumors of dangerous wolves spotted in the forest. Thinking for a while, Arian decides that wolves shouldn't be an issue, as they set out tomorrow. Cutting to Princess Uriarna, we see her boarding a carriage, asking to be swiftly brought to a specific location. Back with Ark, we see Arianne recount tales of scary stories involving wolves, only to change topics as she mentions her sister's marriage. When Ark offers to bring a gift to her wedding, Arianne gets shy, asking to forget about it. Suddenly Ponta senses something, alerting Arianne and Ark, as they both brace for attacks. Reacting to a wolf pouncing from the bushes, Ark realizes that he has just slashed an illusion. Cutting through several illusions, Ark remembers that haunted wolves are a type of illusion creature that creates illusions of itself to throw off prey. Additionally, the wolves hunt in packs, making them very dangerous, as they are quite intelligent with how they hunt. Seeing Ariane shoot a projectile at an illusion, Ark gets worried when several wolves sneak up from behind, but Ariane conjures several earth spikes, impaling the single wolf and destroying its illusions. Looking around, Ark manages to spot the leader of the pact, having multiple tails. Relocating behind the wolf, Ark realizes the creature has a red band around its leg, attempting to slice at it but the wolf dodges. Allowing the wolf to move behind Ark, Ark catches the wolf off guard, casting a spell to displace it, only to cleave away the red band. Free, the leader howls, calling for its followers to retreat, all whilst Ark watches them retreat back into the forest. Regrouping with Ark, Ariane asks if it was Ark who scared the wolves off, but stops as she notices the red band, suddenly dispersing, leaving no trace of it. Telling Arane about the basilisk with a similar band, the two begin wondering the reason for the creatures having the band. But Ariane changes the topic, as she wants to make a present out of the wolf she killed, as a wedding gift for her sister. Cutting to Princess Uriarna and her attendant, the princess is seen anxious of traveling, as she was given the task of meeting special people, by her father. Knowing that Dakares is involved with the slave trade, and sects thirst for the throne, she can't help but wonder what the two are thinking. Suddenly the carriage shakes violently, as we cut back to Ark. Watching as Arian preps the wolves to be gifted, Ark thinks about combat ability, as someone with powerful tools, weapons and skills will be useless, if their battle sense is non-existent. Wondering if he should ask Arian to train him, Ponta suddenly gets up, running into the forest. Chasing after Ponta, Ark asks that Ariane wait here, as he follows after Ponta. Back with the princess, we see her and her attendant hear attackers make their way to the carriage, knowing that she must protect the princess. The attendant brings out a blade, but is cut down the moment she opens the carriage door. Attempting to check up on her attendant, the princess is impaled from behind, falling unconscious, as several hooded figures stand over the battlefield. As one of them calls out to make their work look like bandits had attacked the princess, Ponta suddenly attacks one of the attackers, but does no damage. Before the men can harm Ponta, Ark appears, demanding that the men relinquish Ponta. Seeing a massive knight in their way, the hooded men fire spells at Ark, but Ark simply ignores them, as he checks up on the two fallen girls. Believing that the two have lost too much blood, Ark suddenly realizes that the wolves from earlier have come to assist Ark, meeting eyes with the pack leader. Helping to scare off, and kill several hooded men, Ark decides to try a healing spell, but he fears that he might be too late. Luckily, the princess begins breathing again, encouraging Ark to try on the other slayed humans. Casting it on the attendant, Ark manages to heal the attendant and the majority of men, but there are still casualties. All whilst Ark works his magic, the princess barely catches a glimpse of him, mistaking Ark for an angel. Being woken up by her attendant, 
The princess assesses the situation realizing that she wasn't dreaming and had indeed been healed by a mysterious figure. Realizing that some of her men have fallen, and that their equipment have been damaged, the princess realizes that she has been given a second chance. Standing firm, the princess rallies her men, stating that they must not falter, immediately resuming their mission, as they carry on to their desired location. As Ark watches the princess spring into action, he begins to wonder if intervening was the right thing to do, asking Panda for advice. Returning to Ariane, we see she's extracted the tails of the wolf, allowing the two to continue to their destination. Having arrived in town, the two head to some commotion that they heard, seeing three boys picking on a single girl. Before Ark can intervene, Ariane holds him back, as the girl sends one of the boys flying, only to beat up the rest. Wanting to mind their own business, the girl suddenly looks in their direction, greeting Ark, as Ark recognizes her as the ninja that gave him intel about some captured elves. Flashing back, the ninja is apparently going around, looking for beast people who have been captured too. When she encountered Ark that one night, she realized that he had a smell she didn't recognize, and on top of that, he had Ponta, a creature known to despise evil beings. Commending Ark for being able to rescue the elves, Ariane wonders who this girl is, which Ark tells her the ninja helped him locate the elves. Introducing himself, Ark learns that the ninja's name is Chiom, and she reminds Ark of shinobis in the game he used to play. Relocating to somewhere more secluded, Ark and Ariane formally introduce themselves, as Chiom wonders how Ark knew she was a ninja, as that is a secret only known to her village. Making up a lie, Ark says that where he came from, ninjas were a common thing, which makes Chiom think that Ark is related to the Great Founders. Explaining, the Great Founders were beings meant to have existed 600 years ago, but are long gone. Believing that the Founders could have been other humans transported to this world, Ark watches as Ariane questions Chiom's reason for killing the men that night. Seeing Chiom stiffen up, Ark deduces that Chiom is looking for beast people captured, similar to how elves are being captured. As Chiom confirms Ark's suspicions, she asks if Ark could assist her in recapturing some captured beast people, but Ark states that he's currently contracted by Ariane. Asking for Ariane's opinion, Ariane learns that Chiom is very similar to her, having been trained at a young age to fight and protect their own kind. Knowing that it would be good to help others, Ariane agrees to help, as Chiom states that she has valuable information in return. Cutting to Dakares, we see him grow frustrated, learning that the wolves in the forest he was controlling had stopped following his orders, and as a result he wasn't able to kill off Uriarna. Unable to pinpoint her location, Dakares learns from his attendant that Uriarna will most likely be able to meet with the elves, and that his life is possibly in danger. Immediately heading out, Dakares heads out, all whilst his attendant suspiciously watches from afar. Back with Ark, he begins asking about the founder that founded the ninjas in this world, learning that the founder Hanzo was the one who established the ninja organization, and that he was human. Now without a single doubt, Ark knows that Hanzo was originally Japanese, growing jealous as Hanzo was able to have his legacy remembered, even after 600 years. Making it to an edge, Chiyom shows them Edzit, the largest slave stronghold in the capital, housing all types of slaves. Wanting to attack the stronghold tonight, Chiyom grips her fist, as she knows that she can't save everyone. Wondering why, Ariane and Ark learn that Chiyom and her accomplices, intend to simultaneously attack other slave factories, making Edzit a huge distraction, and ensuring that the other smaller slave facilities will be destroyed for good. Hearing Chiyom's resolve, Ark and Ariane offer to help, but Chiyom denies this, not wanting them to die, but Ark reveals his ability to teleport. Impressing Chiyom, Chiyom reveals that Hanzo had a similar ability, beginning to think about how it may be possible to save everyone, if they put it to good use. Immediately running off, Chiyom goes to inform her accomplices, as Ark and Ariane wonder what they should do to pass time. Heading to a bar, Ark and Panda share a meal with Ariane, devouring the food, noting the unique flavors and food combinations. Explaining that all sorts of food exist here in the capital, Ariane offers Ark some mysterious skewered meat, which Ark notes their delicious taste. Happy to hear that, Ariane tells Ark that the meat is of an insect, which surprises Ark, having never expected it. Finishing up, Ark tells Ariane he must do one last thing, heading into the forest. Donning a mask, 
Ark shows off his brilliance, not wanting to stand out, but Ariane says that his big stature already separates him from the rest. Offering Ariane a mask, Ariane rejects the offer, letting out her true thoughts. Noting Ark's creepy look, she asks Ark if he was scammed, but doesn't believe so, only to see that Ponta doesn't like the mask either. Apologizing for being late, Chiom brings a friend Gomon, who originates from the same place as Chiom, and has a large body frame. Recognizing Gomon's name, Ark learns that Chiom and Gomon are not their real names. Remembering lore about ninjas in the game he played, Ark is able to deduce their real names, along with the other ninjas he has yet to meet. Suddenly Gomon gets up in Ark's face, sizing him up, as the two begin to test each other's strength, only to leave it as a draw. With the clouds in the sky, covering the moonlight, Chiom begins the mission. Seeing her comrades in place, Chiom says that Ariane and her will attack the rear, all whilst Ark and Gomon draw their attention from the front. Just like that, the mission begins. As the two men head towards the entrance, they draw the attention of the knights on duty, demanding that Ark and Gomon leave. Ignoring the knight's warning, Gomon casts an earth protection spell, only for Gomon and Ark to charge into the entrance of the stronghold, easily breaking through. Having drawn the attention of the knights on duty, Ark silences the knights insulting his friend, as Gomon continues to fortify his body, taking little Tio no damage. Advancing forwards, Ark declares that he will not stop until he tears the stronghold open, checking if Gomon is on board with his plan. Thinking of ways to draw more attention, Ark begins casting an earth spell, scaring the knights, as such a strong figure is also able to wield magic. Laughing maniacally, Ark hedges Gomon on, prompting Gomon to follow up with an earth spell of his own, several spikes that displace the knights. As the two get fired up, they accidentally fuse their magic together, causing their earth spike spell to bleed across the stronghold. Luckily, this allows the girls to sneak in from behind, with no issues. Learning that Edzid Market, and other slave markets are being attacked, Prince Dakares orders for reinforcement, wondering why such a thing is happening now of all times. Knowing that Ark and Gomon have drawn all attention from the guards, Shiom and Ariane stop at a door, easily lock-picking it, as they venture deeper into the stronghold. At the same time, other ninjas begin their mission. Allowing several guards to pass, Shiom and Ariane run through the hallways, but Ponta alerts the two, as several guards approach. Conjuring her ninjutsu, Chiyom slaughters the men, but this only draws more attention. Stepping up, Ariane ignites her blade, incinerating the men, as they continue deeper down the hallways. Having fought their way down spiral stairs, they finally reach the cells, where Chiyom announces to the captives that she is here to rescue everyone. Setting them free, Chiyom orders the beast people to help set others free, else they are to help fight. Seeing several guards funneling down the stairs, Ariane dashes forward to hold them off, as Chiyom continues to free everyone. Back on the surface, due to Ark's and Gomon's outrageous magic, they are both buried under rubble, but Ark is seen digging himself free. Checking on Gomon, Ark is impressed, as Gomon had fortified his body, preventing any injuries. Surveying the area, they both agree that their job here is done, meeting up with the others. Learning that Ariane and Chiyom have managed to free all the slaves underground, and have placed them in a safe place, they reason that they should sweep the grounds, in case there are other beast people locked up. Asking Ark to help the girls, Gomon holds his current position, in case of any emergencies. Fighting their way to the highest point of the stronghold, they realize there is a hidden passage, which luckily has other beast people locked up. Happy to free countless others, Chiyom halts at a certain cage, as she realizes that she was too late for some people. Seeing Chiyom in pain at the loss of several lives, Ark is forced to remind Chiyom of their current mission. As Gomon continues to distract the men, Ark begins working his magic, continuously teleporting groups of captured to safety, learning from Chiyom that other smaller facilities have been raided, only to return to Gomon. Seeing a beat-up Gomon, Ark becomes enraged, as the two combine their magic to completely eradicate the disgusting facility. From afar, the two girls stand in amazement, seeing the aftermath of their raid, only to realize that Ark and Gomon have returned, with all the corpses of the deceased beast people. Setting their bodies ablaze, the gang watches as the spirits of the fallen dance in the night sky, happy to be free, all whilst Chiyom apologizes for being too late, 
and that she will get stronger. Cutting to Dakares, we see him throw a tantrum, awaiting news on the slave facilities. As he attempts to head to check on the outcome of battle, Dakares is suddenly killed by his attendant, allowing Sek to enter the room. As the attendant hands Sek jewelry belonging to Uriarna, Sek states that this will be enough, to pin Uriarna's disappearance on Dakares, guaranteeing Sek is handed the throne. Confirming that her people have been successful on their ends of the mission, Chiom thanks Ariane and Ark, only for Gomon to begin wrestling Ark. As the two complement each other, Chiom and Ariane both set their sights on growing stronger, as the four watch the sun rise on a new day. As the four travel through a canal, Chiom states that she'll be heading to the hidden ninja village, but first she'll give them the information they had asked for. Following Princess Uriarna, we see her ecstatic to see her sister, jumping into her arms, as her sister is grateful that Uriarna is alive. But Uriarna becomes shocked, as she learns that Dakares was killed, having been found out to be the one that attempted to murder her. Realizing that Sect is now king, Uriarna grows suspicious, as everything had worked out in Sect's favor. As her older sister wants to announce Uriarna's survival, Uriarna states that her survival should be kept a secret for now, as it may prove useful in the future, wanting to see how Sect will act when he's king, and when he learns that Uriarna is still alive. Parting ways with Chiom and Gomon, Ariane reports what she has been up to, to the elders, as Ark and Ariane make their way to the next location. Apparently, they must head to the Holy Empire of Revlon, which Ark notices Ariane has a stern demeanor, after hearing that name. Listening in, on a conversation between the Emperor of Revlon, and his informer, the Emperor is pleased to hear that Princess Uriarna, is reported dead. But the red bands that he had provided had little to no use, as Dakares is now dead, speculating if a mysterious assailant is thwarting their plans. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like and comment.